Eric Piazza joins me now from Accra, Ghana. He's a social worker who founded Right to Be Free slash Africa. Its mission is free victims of trafficking, forced labor, and other forms of exploitation. Really appreciate your time there, Eric. Tell us more about the work you do with Right to Be Free slash Africa. Thank you very much. Right to Be Free is a, an NGO that works in um, the area of rescuing victims, rehabilitating them, reuniting them with their families and really helping them to reintegrate them into society. We've rescued about almost about a thousand plus children from the fishing industry. And then we also build support build the capacity of law enforcement agencies to combat trafficking and, and other civil society organizations. What are some of the circumstances in which people are trafficked in Africa? Is there a, a pattern? Does it depend on the country? What, what are some of the things and the clues that you really look out for to, to see who's being trafficked and, and, and what's happening? In, 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 in Ghana, per se, in particular, there are two, way, two, two, two types of traffic that occurs here. Children who are supposed to take to the lakeside to work on, in the fishing area. And then we have uh, girls being taken to the Gulf countries to work as them. A domestic servant. But some of the indicated, and so some of the children working in the lakeside, you, you find them that they've been given to children, the fishermen to use them for fishing. Some of the things I can look for is maybe if you see a child who is not in school at a school going age on the lake working, one of them is that I see some people with abuse on, and bruises on their body and the leakage trafficking or something like that. But majority of them are, are trafficked through um, the fishing sector, as in Ghana, and then Others are also trafficked outside the country to, let's say, the Gulf countries to work as, a, uh, as domestic servants over there. You design rescue missions. Tell us about some of the rescue plans that you've carried out and, you know, some of the risks involved as well. Okay. I adopted a, a, a concept called the, what do you call them, the five hours. We, we do what you call research. We go into place to find out what exactly, where victims are taken to. We, by by informants giving us information. Then we do, we find a way to see how we can rescue them. Once we rescue them, we, we take them through um, rehabilitation, reintegration, reunification. The plan is that before we go, you, you have informants tell the children somewhere who have been, are used before for either fishing or for other forms of exploitation. Then we, we send people down there to go and do recce to under, and then to, to find out what is happening, happening, whether it's true or not, not true. We get that information, get a bit of evidence. Then we go in either with law enforcement or we go in either through the community chief to uh, talk to them to let the children go out, to go, let them go and go to school. Some of them don't accept. Those who don't accept, we, we send the law enforcement in to help them to rescue them. When you rescue them, you bring them to, to, to the shelter where they can stay there for some time to go to rehabilitation, either two or three months. And then once they, they, they think they're okay, you trade their families, look for their families, find, find why they gave them out. You support them with a, a bit of reintegration re support, and then you put the children back and place them in school and support them for over a period of time. So, of course, you know, rescuing the, these kids that have been trafficked will be your first priority. But what about some of the ways in which, uh, you know, you educate perhaps the fishermen near the lake, the, those who are trying to get these children involved? And how are you supporting the community to try uh, and economically finance themselves without having to, to traffic children to do the work that they need them to do? The two ways of doing supporting the communities, one is the first, first of all, trying to support the, the vulnerable parents who give their children out. But if you don't support the other people who are also vulnerable, who, the, who, who are there, they haven't sell their children out, they will sell their children out. So we do what we call a um, community education system program for them, for the whole community. We find our vulnerable parents who need support, who need like um, income generation activities, who need something to do. Then we train them in the particular skills. The last time we did some, we did some on how to make soap and how to make the big bread, how to do some uh, beats and kind of other kinds of things. We train them in that area to enable them to use it to earn an income. With the fishermen side, we also, some of them, they don't want to do cooperative, come together as two or three fishermen to work together. We encourage them to do that so they can do that without using children. They use children because children are sort of cheap labor. So, but when you encourage them to join cooperative or to get something like adboard motors, it helps them to go far further without using children the part of the canoe. These are the two, two the, some of the ways we use to work with the community okay. and the fishermen. But most often than not, we, we, right. we do it. We'll have to leave it there. I do apologize for interrupting you there, Eric. Eric Pisa from Accra, Ghana, for us. Thank you.